Hello there, Leos. So I know that, you know, we're uh, already on the 7th of November and I apologize for the delay with your reading. Um, I had a lot of things that I needed to move and, you know, I had to leave a new job, go to a new city. So it's been a little bit stressful. And because of that, I didn't want to just whip out these readings and shortchange you guys. I really wanted to take the time and, you know, do it right. So I apologize for the delay. For those of you who are watching this, I really appreciate that. So um, I was talking about the year 2017 in general for all the other signs. And I feel like with Aries, um, a fellow fire sign, it was a lot about letting go, not holding on to grudges. Mainly because I feel like the Aries people, they came to the realization and I feel like it's it's the energy for 2017. It's a very disruptive year. Things accelerate, things happen really fast. And there were a lot of change in direction that we couldn't anticipate. So it's a very disruptive year, needless to say. And I feel like for the Aries people, um, the disruption came about in a way where they start to realize some of the things they have contributed in that created a problem and it didn't need to happen a certain way. So I feel like they're letting go of grudges. They're letting go of resentment, mainly because they're starting to see outside of themselves and to see how they also contributed to a situation. With the Sagittarius people, I feel like this was a very difficult year for them and they've kind of been uh, sticking their head in the sand trying to avoid things, sweeping things under the rug, not dealing with things, procrastinating on things. And um, I feel like, you know, the energy itself was kind of like a, an awakening for them to take care of their practical responsibilities, to not procrastinate, to be a little bit more organized, to kind of like pull their heads out of the sand to face some problems. And once they were able to face those problems, they realized, oh, it wasn't so bad. Why was I, you know, hiding from it? I'm stronger than this. Why did I do that? So I feel like they're learning to take back their power. They're learning what they're worth. And they're learning a lot about, you know, um, how to be self-empowered. And I feel like because you're in between both of these very extreme signs, you might be dealing with both of these energies. And I feel like for you, the resentment has to do, or letting go of grudges or letting go of resentment has to do with the fact that a lot of the time you have a moral compass, right? You know right from wrong, you know what you shouldn't do. And um, if someone violates, you know, one of those uh, ethical codes that you abide by and you become resentful of them, the other person, they don't see there's anything wrong with their actions. They're going to do what they're going to do. So by holding on to these grudges, I feel like you're burdening yourself with resentment. And I feel like it doesn't really affect the other person. It has no bearing on the other person. It's just you seething in silence. And it's really not going to serve any purpose. So letting it go, not for their sake, but more for your sake. So you're not weighed down and you're not, you know, mired in negative thinking, okay? And then on the other end of the uh, spectrum, we have the more Sagittarius energy where I feel like for a lot of you, your energy is almost like very Capricornian. Um, if a work situation is stable, I feel like you, you do tend to stay in it for a really long time. And this is a year where shakeups happen and it basically knocks you out of those safety, um, those environments of safety. You perceive them to be sta safe, you perceive them to be stable, but they're really, really not, you know, your higher calling. And so you've had to deal with some truths when it came to, you know, where do I want to work? How does my job reflect on me as a person? Do I want more out of work? Do I want more out of life? And what steps I need to take to get there? So I feel that energy coming through. And I feel like some of you are possibly kind of weaned away from a specific work environment. There might be a reduction in your income. Or there might be, you know, the next steps that you're planning to take. And as adventurous as you claim to be. I feel like you have really held yourself back because you are resistant to change. And so the energy of 2017 tends to be a little bit disruptive when we are resistant to change. 
and I felt a lot of Aquarius, Scorpios, Taurus um, dealing with this, and now it's you. Whatever is comfortable, you do tend to stay in it, you build up a cocoon, and you pretend that everything is all fine and dandy. And then the shakeup needs to happen to kind of like open your eyes to the fact that I need more, I'm meant for more, what else is out there for me? And I honestly feel this energy here about fast money, money that comes in really fast, they leave your hands just as fast. It's when you really have to scrape and hustle and really work hard for the money. That's when you see the value in it and that's when you appreciate it. So I feel like some of you are redefining the way you think about money, which is good. I feel like it's a, a major transformative type of a year for you. And so moving forward, I feel like there are a lot of plans. There are a lot of new things in store for you. And I feel as if there is a major, major um, energy here about being divinely protected, being divinely guided into the next phase of your life, which is going to bring a lot more prosperity. It's going to bring a lot more pride. It's going to bring a lot more emotional satisfaction in the work that you do and how that work reflects who you are at a core level, how it's not just work that pays the bill, it's work that's meaningful, it's work that's satisfying, it's work that you can, you know, really say, I did this, or I am this person, or I embody this role, or that's where I work. I feel like you're going to find a lot more personal satisfaction in those er uh, areas. So it's not just about, you know, paying the bills. It's more about finding work that is in alignment with our higher selves or, you know, for our high, higher goods. And um, so moving forward, I do feel here that uh, there is a lot of, you're, you're being divinely guided towards something. And I feel like that became very, very apparent, I would say like three months ago. So we are in November right now. So I would say like around the August time frame. Um, late July moving into August was when this energy made itself very clear. Whatever I was doing in the past is not working anymore and I need to change my strategy. And this is something that, you know, it's, it's kind of like that voice in the back of your mind, always nagging at you, always telling you. And I feel like, you know, that um, late July and it could also be around your birthday time. Yeah, I feel like it might have been around birthday time when we're faced with all of these things that we'd rather sweep under the rug but then we also realize we're getting older we're not getting any younger so we need to make some changes and so you needed to make these changes but it was so hard to do them on your own you were waiting on other people you were making discussions with other people and i also feel like I feel like you were counting on other people who could not hold up their end of the bargain. Okay, so this is basically, um, I feel like this is an energy, not so much a person. It could very well be a person, but I'm going to talk about this first. Somebody that makes promises, they make grandiose plans, and I feel like they're going to tell you, it's going to be okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do all of that. And then when it came time to it, there, when it came time to execute these plans, you realize it was all like smoke and mirrors. And they talked big, but they couldn't really follow through. And so what ended up happening was, I, I feel like a big part of you had to deal with this disappointment, had to deal with the fact that, oh my gosh, I put my life on hold or I put my plans on hold, thinking that this person was going to be the savior. Not that, you know, you're looking for a knight in a shining armor to come rescue you. But I feel like when you formulate plans, you do stick to it. And it irks you when the other people just blatantly kind of exit the picture when it's time to execute these plans. So I feel like there was a lot of disappointment. There was a lot of communication breakdown as well, where you thought you were building something with, an, with another person, and then things kind of flopped. And I feel like this was something that happened during your birthday time about three months ago. And I feel like it's still, there's still some grudges, there's still some resentment. And like I said, if they're operating from this space where they 
you know, feed lies or they, they weave you a pipe dream or they make plans with, without intentions to follow through. Um, they're not going to be bothered by your grudges or by your resentment. So by having those, by holding on to those things, it's really going to hurt you, not this person. This person doesn't care. It's really going to hurt you, okay? And so now we're at a point where we are in November and you're formulating new plans. You're trying to let this go and you're trying to salvage what is left and you're trying to figure out. I feel like you, you need to do things on your own, but it, it, it seems to me like it's scary, it's daunting, it's overwhelming. And so you're at a point where you might be formulating plans with other people people that you know, people that you trust, people that are a lot more sincere, are a lot more open-hearted, are a lot more honest with their intentions. And I feel like you're trying to build up something. So this is, to me, usually a new job. Old job is not working. Now we need to do uh, focus our energy on getting a new job, how to get there, how to train ourselves, how to accumulate um, almost like the skills and the expertise in order to jump into a new job. And I also feel like somebody is giving you this idea. And I feel it's somebody within either um, your family, even though it's showing up here as a water sign, I feel like it's within your family, your friendship circle, somebody that you are emotionally invested in. So it's somebody that's giving you hints, giving you ideas, giving you assistance in order to land this you know, really lucrative assignment. And what I feel is, going back to what I mentioned before, in the past, we definitely had a lot of financial abundance coming through, okay? And I feel like you were hustling away, trying to build up this wealth, mainly because, you know, the job itself, you might not have liked the job, but the work itself was easy. There was a lot of financial abundance and it pays the bills and it, it was good. But now you're looking for something more. You're looking for something a little bit more real and a little bit more of a deeper reflection of who you are. When you embody this job, do you feel proud? And I feel like you want something that you can build with, you can grow with, something that, that reflects you, not just a job where there's money, not just a job that pays the bills, but a job that is a lot more inspiring, that is a lot more uh, in alignment with what you're meant to do. And a lot of the times when we shift gears, when we shift directions, we have to start from the bottom, right? We can't just um, change our, our professional, you know, um, niche and jump from one industry into another and expect to be on the same footing. I feel like we have to kind of like humble ourselves and kind of stop, start from the bottom first in order to build things up. And as anxious as you are to start new things, I feel like that idea um, is, is very difficult to take, okay? Mainly because there's a lot of pride here. There's a lot of like, yes, you do have all the experience under your belt, but I feel like you don't want to start from the bottom. You're anxious about making money again. You're anxious to get promotions. You're anxious to kind of build your way up. And you're anxious as well to be in a position of authority, to be in a position of power. So you might turn your back away from this thing, this new opportunity that actually is in alignment with you. It's gonna provide what you need to, to do and it's going to be something that you can grow with, something that you can nurture and something that you will feel very proud about and something that is a true reflection of you. Because it's the nature of the wand's energy which also reflects your energy. But I feel like you're turning your back on it mainly because you feel like you have to start from the bottom. You feel like you have to start over and it's hard. So my advice here, overall, I feel like you are physically done with this work situation. You're physically done. It could be emotionally very tiring. It could be promises are being made, promotions, you know, I'll make you supervisor, I'll make you manager. And then things throw the wrench in the works, okay? You could, for example, have to have long hours where you couldn't really spend time with your children. You had long hours where you couldn't really spend time with your family. And so you had to turn it down, even though it pays really well. 
And then I also feel some obstacles when it comes to like, yes, being able to make good money, but long term, are you able to stay there? Is it stable enough? Is it, you know, viable long term? Can you do something with it? Can you grow with it? And are you proud of the work that you're doing? So there's a lot of just um, inner struggles, I feel, coming through. And I feel like you want the money to be fast. So I see some people who might be tempted with like side gigs that promises huge financial windfall. And they're going to go ahead with that. Whereas, you know, they kind of turn their back on things that are a lot more slow, but a lot more stable. And that's fine. You're going to need to do what you need to do in this present moment. But I would urge you to plan things out a little bit longer term. Think, you know, think in quarters. Think like four months from now, where am I going to be? Or three months from now. Think in terms of, you know, biannually, like six months from now. And I feel like this is, there's opportunities for sure. There's opportunities for quick financial windfall. But I feel like you're not entirely happy with the way that it's panning out. You're ha not entirely happy with the people that you're going to be dealing with because it seems like they're kind of shady characters. And even though there are promises of quick rewards, I feel like you're going to turn your back on it and try to do the right thing. Mainly because I feel like the work is not really, really re a reflection of who you are and it's not something that you want to associate with. And so there are definitely trust issues here as well where I feel like if you work with somebody in the past, they made promises, never deliver. You're going to be very skeptical, which is great because it's like learning from our past mistakes, learning not to peg our dreams onto another person, learning to kind of like go through it alone and in the process of being alone, you're going to find out what really works for you rather than, you know, succumbing to what other people expect of you. Uh, based on this spread, I also feel a big overwhelming energy here about family, okay? Family expectations. And I feel like some of you are, um, it's like a redefining what family really means, you know? Not just the people that we are genetically linked to or biologically linked to. I feel like family for you basically extends across people that actually have been there for you. And so there has been a major shedding process for you guys when it comes to who's really sincere, who's there for me. And I feel like the people that are there for you, that are really emotionally supportive of you, you're investing more time in them. And then the people that, and this is something you want to be careful about, there are some people they are supportive, but they they will tell you the truth. You know, if you're making a bad decision, they're going to tell you you're making a bad decision. It doesn't mean that they're mean. It just means that they don't want you to walk down the wrong path. And so I feel like there has been some letting go of people that actually were really good for you because they didn't mince words. They didn't want to tell you a lie. They didn't want to offer a false support when they know you're doing something that's not good. And so if you can find those people, reconcile with them and make sure they're not gone from your life, that is something you should do. But I feel your pride is preventing that from happening. Okay. And that's okay. You still have some time and they're still going to be around. But I feel like, I, I feel like a lot of the times the way that you associate love is whoever is not with me is against me and that's a very you know fatalistic way of looking at the world and i feel like that's what's happening here and you might have scrapped away some good relationships friendships even family relationships mainly because if they're not with me they're against me so turning your back on something and then on the other hand possibly valuing the people that have always been like the the um, the ones that, you know, give you support even when they know you're headed down um, in the wrong direction. 
So redefining, you know, letting our pride kind of not overtake us, but letting our pride down to be able to look at a person objectively. Are they telling me no because they hate me? Or are they telling me no because they want what's best for me? Because I feel like your pride is still getting in the way when you're making these assessments about what people want from you, what people expect from you, and who's actually looking out for your best interest, okay? Family. For whatever reason with uh, Leo people, family is like, no matter what, what family's members do, you always, always have their full support. And so you want to think about this as well, okay? Are blood ties really that important? Because I feel like there are members of the family who have unrealistic expectations of you and who are very, very harsh when they're dealing with you. But I feel like because it's blood ties, you put up with it. Whereas outsiders that really mean well, but they're not, they're not, you know, like supportive when they know you're making a mistake. You're very, very quick to kind of cut them off. So just be careful about that because I feel like, you know, we have December, we have, well, November and December. And then 2017 is going to come to a close. And so it's really, really important for us this year, you know, deal with all the disruptions that have come in, all the areas in our lives that need readjustment. I feel like this year has hit you pretty hard. And I feel like it's a very, it, it, it indicates to me like finality. A lot of people have solidified relationships and then other people have realized that the relationship was very superficial and you're turning your back. So I feel like it's one or the other. And uh, I, I do see as well, this is proposals, marriages that have happened, solidification of some type of a relationship that, you know, is, is actually very good for you. And it's almost like a situation where you might have rushed into it and you're just like, we'll figure out the logistics later. We'll figure things out later. And I feel like the, the snags in the road or the, the, the little bumps in that relationship are starting to show, but you're still working hard at it, which is fine. And then other people turning their backs, uh, no longer accepting certain relationships, no longer dealing with you know insincere people, and especially cutting somebody off because you feel like they're not uh, supportive of who you are as a person. They're not supportive of your lifestyle and things like that. So I feel like this is the month where you kind of need to, you know, resolve. If there has been falling out, try to resolve them. Try to see things from the other person's point of view. Let your pride down. Let your guard down when you're dealing with people. Because I feel like you're trying to head stubbornly, head into a new venture, new direction. And I feel like there are still things standing in your way that needs to be taken care of, okay? Um, I feel overall, financially, things are looking very, very good for this month. There are side gates coming in, there are jobs, there are opportunities to really increase your money exponentially, like uh, quick, quick money coming through. And I also feel like, you know, once again, money that comes in fast will leave your hands very fast. So you have a chance, you have a second chance here to retain as much of it as you can and save for a rainy day. And I strongly urge you to do that, okay? So we need to be a little bit, uh, we need to slow down a little bit and watch where we're going and watch what we're doing and watch especially what's coming. It, it's almost like anticipate for a rainy day ahead, mainly because if you're moving too fast, you're gonna feel very invincible. And then when it hits, it's gonna feel um shocking okay so slow down a little bit and be cautious um, investment in housing opportunities as well i feel coming through for many of you and if you are moving outside of your geographical location do it in one fell swoop so that means making some plans on your own and then moving that way you're not burdened by decisions from other people that way you're not bogged down waiting for them that way you don't end up you know um make this move about you don't make it about other people okay because i feel like there are obstacles standing in your way all right so i hope the reading has been helpful and uh, once again i'm very sorry for the delay with your reading uh, leos i do wish you the best and uh, take care of yourself okay bye-bye